Have you ever tried to integrate your photos or products into different backgrounds, but found that the perspective wasn't right or the lighting was off, making it a time-consuming task? With the assistance of artificial intelligence, you can accomplish this more easily. I'm using Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 installed on Windows. To achieve what I'm about to show you, you'll need an extension. Follow these steps. Go to the Extensions tab, click on Available, and then on the load from button. This will load all available extensions. Now in the search bar, type in paint background. You'll find an extension that automatically masks your subject and allows you to generate a new background. Click install and wait for the processing to finish. Next, go to the installed tab and check for updates to ensure all your extensions are up to date. Finally, click apply and restart the UI to refresh the interface you'll now have a new option. If you go to the image to image tab under the generation section, you can find in paint background. In the drop image here section, you can either drag your image or click to upload it. Uh, I'll be using a square ratio image of a purse. Once you've added the image, you'll notice how it automatically masks out the background. You can also choose to blur the mask if you'd like. The default value is set at four. Now for the size, I typically use a similar ratio with CFG scale 7, and I use the Realism Engine checkpoint model. As for the denoise strength, let's test it with a value of 0.5. For the prompt, you can specify what you want to see in the generated image. In my case, I'll aim for a rustic environment with the purse placed on a wooden shelf, including words like product photo. Once you click Generate, you'll receive an image of the purse with shadows on the ground placed on a wooden shelf. If you increase the denoise value, say to 0.75, it gives the AI more freedom, resulting in more detailed images. However, be cautious as it might add details that appear as part of your product. Finding the right balance with denoise strength is essential. You'll notice how a denoise value of 0.9 can further alter the background. In some cases, unexpected elements might appear. In such instances, you can generate another image to get a different variation. As you can see, it's a powerful tool, though not flawless, as I'll demonstrate later in this video. Um, nonetheless, it can save you a significant amount of time. Here's another test, this time with a rose. Even though it cut out more than I intended from the rose due to its blurriness, I'll see what I can create. My aim is to craft a romantic image featuring a rose against a pink satin textile background. At a denoise value of 0.5, you'll notice that it still adds texture, but it's quite subtle. When I increase the value to 0.7, it becomes more creative. And at a value of 0.9, it gains even more freedom to adjust the background, seamlessly blending it with the rows. Let's move on to the next test with an image of a green bottle. As you can see, it has successfully removed the background, but since the bottle is made of glass and was initially against a black background, the interior remains black. To enhance the blending effect, I'll prompt for a dark background that complements it. Let's go with an epic forest prompt and see the transformation. Interestingly, a denoise value of 0.5 didn't make much difference in this case, even though it worked for the rows. I'll have to increase the denoise value. Now it looks quite appealing and the process is quite fast. I'll try another version, this time opting for a dark cave prompt. Maybe I'll add some descriptive words like fantasy and why not god rays. The result is not bad. Let's try another one. It looks intriguing, certainly less mundane than a simple solid background. Now this method also works with other subjects like people, not just products. I'll test it using a portrait of a woman. As you can see, it does a decent job masking the hair. I'd like to change the environment to a winter setting with some snow, perhaps. Since we originally had blue in the background, it blended quite nicely. However, let's experiment by changing the colors a bit and creating a spring scene with green tones. In this case, it didn't blend as seamlessly, and you can notice the blue contour. I've found a solution that involves some quick Photoshop work. First, I send the result to image to image. Then, using the same prompt and settings, 
I changed the denoise strength to 0.1. However, as you can see, there's still a hint of that blue glow. So I'll try a value of 0.2. In this case, it blends much better, but we lose the original face. To address this, I'll use Photoshop. On the first layer, I have the image I just generated, and on the second layer, I place the original photo of the woman. I'll add a mask and fill it with black. Then, using a soft brush with a white color, I'll reveal the original face. Essentially, you can paint back the entire face while keeping the blend with the new environment. Take a look at the before and after to see how well it blends. I have a more challenging image of a robot in the forest. It cut out quite well, but when there isn't enough empty space between elements, it may struggle to identify the subject clearly. In such cases, you can create more room in Photoshop to help it recognize the subject better. Um, for instance, using the Remove tool, I can remove a problematic part, and upon importing it again, it might recognize it a bit better. Um, you can also experiment with masking, although I wish there were settings to adjust the mask's range. If anyone knows how to do that, please share in the comments. For this test, I'll prompt it to uh, create a winter environment. What I find fascinating is how it seamlessly integrates my image, adding snow on top. Achieving this effect in Photoshop for those who do photo manipulation can be quite challenging. Uh, in the settings, you can also in-paint what's not masked preserving the background while replacing the robot. It may not be perfect, but it can likely be fine-tuned quickly in Photoshop or sent to image to image for further adjustments. In this last example, I have a red can with my logo on it, and I wanted it to be in the desert sand. However, since the original image had a white background, you can spot some small mistakes around it with those white reflections on the can. To fix this, just as I did with the portrait, I send it to image to image. Here, I ensure it has the same ratio in settings, and since my video card can handle larger images, I use that size. For denoise, I prefer a low value to maintain similarity. A value of 0.25 worked fine in this case. As you can see, it's, uh, it's successfully removed those white reflections and now looks like it belongs in the desert sand. In Photoshop, I have the first image where it still has some white reflections, and then I add the last generation that looks great but has a different logo. In this case, I applied a white mask since I want to keep the top image and only hide the logo part and the interior of the can. I carefully use a soft black brush to conceal the middle of the can. And just like that, uh, you can create the perfect mock-up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like since it doesn't cost you anything but can help my channel grow. A few more robot tests. Thank you for watching.